So now that you guys have a decent understanding of general bull shark biology, I want to tell you a little more about how we study them here at the Bimini Biological Field Station. It starts with, as many of our studies do, capturing a live animal. To do this, we found an aggregation site, or a bull shark hotspot, that we'll usually go to to target the bull sharks. We will anchor our boat and start chumming until we can see bull sharks are in the area. Then we will try our best to target one and use the same methodology we use for the hammerhead capture, polyball fishing. Once we have the animal alongside the boat, we will go through a standard workup. But one crucial aspect of the bull shark workup is that we must implant an acoustic tag. To do this, we must flip the animal and put it into tonic immobility. Fatal, can you explain to us a little bit more about tonic immobility and why it is beneficial compared to chemical anesthetics when we are dealing with sharks? Yes, absolutely. So, tonic immobility is a coma-like state that some terrestrial and or aquatic animals enters if you flip them ventral side up and it's characterized by a complete loss of muscle tone. Um, so when we do deploy those acoustic tags, we do that directly into the peritoneal cavity through a small incision on the ventral side of the shark. And when we do that, we see ourselves often confronted with the question why we wouldn't use chemical anesthetics. And there is actually a paper from 2015 of which the citation is linked in the caption that found that using tonic immobility rather than chemical anesthetics in sharks has a lot of benefits. So first, it decreases the handling time. There's also no risk of overdosing your shark and there is no risk of a chemical substance being absorbed by biological tissue. Also tonic immobility shows an immediate and complete recovery as soon as you flip that shark back up. And chemical anesthetics don't have that. Chemical anesthetics need somewhat of a recovery phase. But we can't really have that recovery phase in sharks because if we do, we would increase the risk of smaller sharks getting predated on by bigger predators after release and it could also reduce the respiratory capacity of ram ventilating sharks, potentially increasing their um, post-release mortality. So that's why using tonic immobility rather than chemical anesthetics in sharks might help to reduce the negative impacts on sharks during a workup. So now that we know how these tags are deployed, what else can we learn from this acoustic data? So what we've learned from previous tag deployments on bull sharks is that some of our bull sharks actually leave the island and undertake some long distance migrations. And such long distance migrations in sharks are often linked to specific reasons. For example, prey availability, but it could also be linked to reproduction, say, leave the island to go and find a mate, leave the island to go and give birth to your young. So thanks to a collaboration with our friends from EI Medical, we actually have access to a specifically designed and fully waterproof ultrasound device. So that allows us to determine on the spot if a female bull shark is pregnant. So we can then tag her um, and kind of like track her movements during her pregnancy until her due date. And then we can try and find out more if these long distance migrations of our bull sharks are related to um, pupping. And if so, where exactly our sharks are going to pup. So all of this is part of a bigger picture. Our knowledge about ecosystem functioning as well as critical habitat for pupping grounds can help us monitor certain populations health. The bull shark is one of many species here at the shark lab we use as a vessel for understanding movement patterns in hopes of protecting important nursery grounds. The sharks of Bimini play a huge role in the marine ecosystems that surround the islands. By being able to constantly study these animals, it allows us to see a bigger picture of how their life history might be affected by things like overfishing or habitat degradation. Bull sharks can get a bad rep because of their size, aggression, and coastal living. However, I hope you guys at home can start to see their importance as an apex predator in marine ecosystems worldwide. Thanks again for tuning in, and until next time.